Mics are good, right? You sure? Most important. Mics are okay. Mics are good. Very good. All right. Sound for sync. Three, two, one, action. Welcome to the program, viewers. You're watching us coast to coast throughout North America, and I'm Rohit Vyas with TV Asia. We're talking to senior executives of Mass Mutual, a top financial uh, group and a top insurance company here in the United States. In fact, many, many decades old company with a history of providing services to consumers around the country. Our guest right now is the vice president for Mass Mutual. He's Phil Michalowski. Give you a bit about his background. Phil is an industry veteran. He's had over 20 years of experience in financial services and retirement income expertise to impart upon consumers as the vice president in this group of companies. He's also passionate, it says, about helping people secure their futures and protect the ones they love through insurance and retirement income strategies and to ensure their futures are absolutely secure. Thank you, Phil, for joining us on TV. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Tell us a bit about your specific role with this company and in today's world, in today's financial environment, today's uh, uncertainties, as it were, uh, mm -hmm. not just in the U.S. economy, the U.S. economy doing much better than the rest of the world, but in the world as a whole with the uncertainties, uh, what would Mass Mutual in particular do to convince people this is what you got to do for your future to secure it? And let's, let's gear it towards specifically the Asian American, the Asian Indian community. Uh, sure. So my role with Mass Mutual, um, I lead the product marketing organization. So we provide uh, financial education around the various um, services and products that we offer, so whether it be for retirement income, um, protecting your family from a legacy perspective, long-term care, uh, protecting your income with disability insurance. So we provide um, information to to consumers. Uh, we also support our financial um, professionals uh, who work with those consumers uh, on not just the product information, but also planning process, planning techniques, um, and the ability to address some of those challenges um, that you talked about. Uh, you know, some of the, the challenges that uh, are faced in the Asian uh, Indian, um, amongst the Asian Indian families. You know, some of their uh, financial priorities have been identified as um, that we've identified in our State of the American Family Research uh, are saving for a children's college uh, along with protecting uh, their family's financial future. And so with that, you have about 25% of the Asian Indian community is uh, struggles a bit with prioritization. Um, so when you think about the challenge of saving between um, saving for college uh, or for retirement. Or for retirement, yes. Um, so, you know, we can help them with that prioritization and that planning. Um, another topic that where the general public also struggles with is uh, the topic of Social Security. Um, you know, we've done some recent research and identified that there's a lack of knowledge around Social Security, which is a little bit troubling considering you know, the importance of Social Security and retirement income planning. So give us a bit on that. So a lot of people think, okay, Social Security is there to stay. You know, I don't have to worry about my future. Mm -hmm. But how does a company like yours um, convince, you know, a consumer or someone who's looking to secure the future, look, don't depend entirely, and I'm assuming that's what you're saying here, mm -hmm. is one should not really depend entirely upon Social Security, but think about planning for the future as an alternative an alternative to Social Security? Uh, that's correct. So Social Security pl planning is, is really important as part of the retirement income planning process. And so I think fo folks need to understand the role that Social Security plays in developing a retirement income strategy. Um, and also being educated around the different filing strategies and the implications of filing too early uh, as an example. You can leave a lot of money and reduce your benefits if you file too early for Social Security. A lot of folks don't understand that. And so understanding the different sources of income that you're going to have and how they fit different expense needs or different priorities uh, as you plan for retirement um, and other needs with your family, uh, it's really un and critical to understand that you're not leaving money on the table and that you're gonna have a successful retirement. And Social Security plays a very important role uh, in that planning process. So now, to, to help people feel financially secure now and for the future, mm -hmm. uh, here's a question I've got for you, uh, is how soon should they be planning for this? 
Should they be planning for this when they're young people, when they're older, they start to have families or contemplate having families and begin thinking at that stage? Or uh, you know, what stage do you think is the right time yeah. for a person to start thinking about their future? Because when you're young, you don't think about that. No, that you're, you're brash and you say, ah, right. I mean, I've got forever to live. Right. The fact is we don't. And, right. and, and so tell me, when is a good age yeah. to start? Uh, you can never start financial education early enough. Um, you know, planning uh, is planning can can start as early as when you're a child, right? Financial education uh, at the young ages. Uh, I know that's a priority within the Asian Indian community in in, in making sure that folks are financially sound and, and, and educated um, in savings. And so that being a priority, it's you can start, you know, educating your children about what it means to have a savings account. Um, but you know, when you start to work and you get into the workforce uh, and you're starting off with a family, it's really, really important. You know, um, many uh, folks in the Asian Indian community are professionals uh, and business owners. And so understanding, um, you know, the process around saving and even protecting um, your income is really, really important. So if, if you were to become disabled, uh, if you were to fall too ill to be able to work, you know, having something like a disability insurance, for example, is really important to be able to replace the income that you would lost by not working. Um, so, you know, part of that financial education process is partly savings, but it's also part protection as well. So we're not just talking life insurance, as it were. We're talking about insurance as ensuring the financial stability of individuals. Exactly. Any mistakes that people make um, in terms of assuming let's say social security is available, we discussed that, mm -hmm. but a bit more about mistakes that they might make and thinking, hey, social security is there forever. Should we, for instance, um, me, if I were to think about my own retirement, mm -hmm. should I totally depend on social security? Should I say it's gonna be there forever? You as a professional advising me, what would you say to me? Yeah, no, you know, I think there's, it, it's, you should never be looking to rely on only one source uh, of income, right? So. It, you, you, it's diversification, diversification of risk, um, whether it's asset allocation and growing your assets. At the same time, when you're thinking about retirement income sources, diversification of where you're getting those uh, income sources from is very important. So part of, part of the process and in, in one of the key foundational elements is identifying what are your needs, what are your expenses that you uh, think you'll be incurring throughout you know, your retirement, and what types of income sources should I align to those expense needs? So for example, my necessary expenses. I am going to you know, need to keep a roof over my head. I'm gonna to need to feed my family. I should probably have more lifetime uh, oriented income sources or guaranteed income sources um, to align with those expenses. Uh, and then I can look to other types of investments um, you know, maybe some market-based things to fund some of my discretionary activities. So it's really important that um, you understand the full breadth of income solutions that are available and to be able to align those to particular needs. Is it ever too late um, to fund, plan your future, to plan your financial future? Is, is someone in his 40s or her 40s, someone in their 50s, is it time over already for them, do you think? Uh, no, you know, I, I think we all have the ability to adjust our lifestyle and our, and, and our needs and wants. Uh, so while the later you start, uh, the more challenging it may be. Um, but really it comes down to, you know, no matter how late it is, uh, instilling that discipline in savings, uh, planning, understanding what your needs and expenses um, are, and then being able to align whatever resources that you have available to you to make sure that you can match those expenses. And sometimes you may have to make some difficult uh, decisions in, in regards to lifestyle, et cetera. Um, but at the end of the day, it's never too late to start planning. It's never too late to start saving. Uh, it's never too late to start preparing. And that leads me to the final question, which is, you know, a whole, a whole lot of viewers who are watching this right now. Mm -hmm. Many are reaching retirement now. Their kids are now taking over and the rest of it. When would you say is the right time to make the right social security election decisions? You, you talked about age being one. Yep. The sooner you ask, uh, you, you yep. elect to receive Social Security benefits, the less you will receive. Mm -hmm. But that's the promise the government makes. Mm -hmm. So in your judgment and in your, in your uh, as you've advised people over these couple of decades, mm -hmm. when do you think is the right time to make the right decisions about Social Security in particular? Sure. Well, so from Social Security, you know, 
and I think in the planning in general, right, um, everybody's unique, needs are unique. So for some folks, filing at 62 and accepting the reduced benefits of that may actually make sense for one person's particular needs. So, you know, if you delay your filing to age 70, then, you know, you can have significant uh, deferral credits in your benefits and get a lot more income. And so I think that is very advantageous for folks to at least explore what your options are, what your lifestyle looks like, and can I, can I afford to defer uh, the filing of those benefits all the way out to age 70? Because the, uh, the credits that you get are very, very significant. But again, I think this is really important where folks should engage with a financial professional, be educated. Um, it, the Social Security Administration provides significant resources uh, for folks to educate themselves and then marrying that, that education along with the uh, assistance of a financial professional, I think can help you arrive at that, that answer um, because it is a, a very personal uh, decision that needs to be made in accordance with your, your lifestyle and your needs. An important point. Thank you very much for educating us about uh, the future of uh, everyone's finances and what people need to know. Thank you for joining us on TV Asia. Our guest is uh, Phil Michalowski, the Vice President of Mass Mutual. Phil, thank you again. Thank you very much.